Hi, one hour smart home here, and today we're going to cover the difference between a GFI versus GFCI. So I've got a GFI in my right hand, and I have a GFCI in my left hand. And GFI stands for Ground Fault Interrupter. GFCI stands for Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. So what's the difference between these two, a GFI versus GFCI? Well, there's absolutely nothing. Now I have a GFI in my right hand and I have a GFCI in my left hand. That's because these terms are interchangeable. Somebody just shortened the acronym for a ground fault circuit interrupter to GFI because they don't want to use the C anymore in the acronym. And this confuses a lot of people because people think a GFI and a GFCI are different, but they're actually the same thing, just missing that C term in the middle and they are completely interchangeable. So a GFCI is a GFI and a GFI is a GFCI. Now, what does a ground fault circuit interrupter do or a ground fault interrupter do? They are used to protect you from possible shock hazards by cutting off the power when a ground fault is detected by the ground fault circuit interrupter switch. And typically where you're going to find these is in bathrooms and kitchens or any location where you're gonna be within six feet of a water source. Now, as time goes on, these are becoming more common in places like basements and garages or anywhere that you might have possible exposure to water because electricity and water don't mix and a GFCI provides protection from a continual current flowing through, let's say, a puddle of water. When a frayed electrical cord gets dropped in the water, the GFCI will shut off because it detects there is a ground fault in the cord and then prevents that voltage from continuously flowing through the water or puddle that could potentially injure somebody. So a GFCI and a GFI have a little chip inside of here that is constantly measuring current. And when that chip detects that there is a ground fault, it shuts off the power to the outlet to reduce and prevent the risk of an electrical shock. Now, I've got a couple tips that can help you with GFIs and GFCIs throughout your home. What a lot of people don't know is that one GFCI outlet can protect multiple outlets on the same circuit. So if you have different outlets wired downstream of this GFCI, those devices plugged into the other outlets that are wired to this GFCI, if they are wired correctly, will be protected with ground fault circuit interruption protection, which that is great. But a lot of times what people don't realize is this may be turned off or tripped because somebody pressed the test button and then your outlets downstream of this GFCI that are connected to the GFI for protection will no longer function. So if you have an outlet in the same room as a GFI or GFCI and it's not working, it's a good chance that your GFI or GFCI, somebody pressed that test button and those other outlets aren't working. So go ahead and try that. Now, if you have a GFI or GFCI that isn't working, just go ahead and press the reset button and that should get the device back online. Now, if you have an appliance or a device plugged into the GFCI and it keeps tripping, then you should remove that device from service because it most likely has a fault and the GFI or GFCI is doing its job to prevent an electrical shock. Now, if you have an issue with your GFCI where you test and reset it and the GFI still won't turn on or the GFCI won't turn on after you test it and press the reset button, it probably means that your GFCI is bad. Now there are ground fault circuit interrupter testers that you can get for about $5 that I recommend you use to test your GFCI outlets to make sure that they're working and wired properly. But typically if you press the test button and the reset button and you go back to reset this and it keeps tripping or it won't turn on, it means that that GFCI has gone bad because there are electrical components that can wear out in here over time. Now, the place that I've seen GFCIs and GFIs 
go bad most often is outdoor GFIs and outdoor GFCIs. And that's because people don't put a cover on these. And a lot of people will have covers on these that allow you to plug something in, but that cover is not waterproof, it is not water resistant, and it does not shed water. And typically when you see this is around the holiday seasons when people have lights plugged in for their front yards or an extension cord and they leave it there for months in the snow and rain and that outlet with the sensitive circuitry is exposed to water, snow, sleet, and rain. So to prevent that, I recommend that you get an outdoor outlet cover that allows you to plug something into your outdoor GFCI outlet that will also cover the cord and the switch during the rain and snow, so no rain, water, or snow gets in here and it protects your GFCI or GFI. So this is a typical cover that I'm talking about that allows you to plug in an electrical cord and protect your outdoor GFCI outlet at the same time so that you can leave devices plugged in and your GFCI or GFI is protected from the elements. I'm gonna include a link to this below and a couple of recommendations for these. They've got metal ones and plastic ones, but these are all good options to protect your GFCIs. Now, I highly recommend doing this because if your GFI or GFCI is left to be exposed to the elements, they will wear out much quicker. And when you wanna use that outdoor outlet, you have the potential that it will no longer work. So. This small investment in an outdoor outlet electrical cover for your GFI or GFCI can save you a fair amount of money in the long term, and it is way more convenient if you wanna plug things in and leave them plugged in for a period of time. So thank you for watching this video on GFIs versus GFCIs. They are the exact same thing. It's just a matter of terminology in somebody shortening down the acronym. So if you need a GFI or a GFCI, they are the exact same thing. Now we've got other videos that show you how to install a GFCI and you can go ahead and check the links below if you wanna learn how to replace or install a GFCI outlet. Thank you for watching. Please give us that thumbs up, subscribe if you want to support us, and you can click any of the links below or watch our other videos. Thanks for watching.